Rudy Gobert is a defensive stud, riding his incredible 7'9 wingspan to consecutive Defensive Player of the Year awards. But does defense make him a superstar? And does that defense lose value in the playoffs as so many have suggested? Gobert, of course, is thought of as a shot-blocking machine, the Stifle Tower, the French Rejection, a man with helicopter blade arms that spit back shots like a mini golf obstacle. But he's so much more than a rim protector who stands near the hoop and plays goalie. He's a paint protector. He's near the foul line here, but has the mobility to slide down and completely destroy this layup attempt. Deterring shots like this is a Gobert special, his hoop du jour, where his presence is so intimidating that attackers don't even try it. There are entire possessions where everyone on the team wants to avoid him like he has an infectious disease, and so block percentages tend to understate his shot blocking prowess and his overall paint presence. Harden says no thanks for a second time, and it's a desperate miss. Rudy's quicker than you think, actively shuffling his feet and staying on his proverbial toes, and his reactions are quick too, changing direction smoothly to stamp out threats at the rim. This gives him impressive paint coverage, coming out of nowhere to help teammates near the hoop. He can shift from covering a corner shooter a pass away like this to the other side of the lane in just over a second. Again, he helps right as the attacker gets a step. This mobility allows him to defend outside the paint, picking up a forward here, then turning his hips to the hoop so he can explode and swat it. Here he shadows Dame Lillard, returns to his man, then pounces the big steps again, eating up space, and Lillard hears footsteps and turns it over. And Rudy's most impressive trait might be his body control, sliding back, shifting to the roller, but still contesting above the rim. He takes contact, stays on his toes, and still gets there. This means that he's hard to upfake. Little hops with a second jump will often do. Heck, just staying down like this is a 9 foot 7 standing reach that's challenging for most players. That's an offensive foul. This kind of reactivity and balance is a staple of great rim protectors who don't run themselves out of plays, the all-important second effort, if you will. All of this allows him to stretch to the perimeter, then recover to contest in a different direction. These are great reactions and then remarkable body control for someone seven foot two in shoes. Here he helps early, is ready to contest, but Tatum euros and Gobert's backup plan gets it on the way up anyway. The Celtics try the rescreen move I mentioned in the last video, but Gobert has enough agility to slide around it and make an amazing save. So despite his height, he's not a statue. He's actually pretty comfortable out on the perimeter. Here he's switched onto a forward and stays with him, again, turning the hips to the baseline to stride instead of slide. This technique is marginally effective, although sometimes Rudy's size can't recover from a lost step, but He's willing to come out and guard quicker perimeter players when needed, and he can stretch to shooters and then recover back to the paint with that great body control. He's competitive on a lot of drives coming to the basket from slashing big men. For instance, he's had mixed results in battles with someone like Carl Anthony Towns, who's one of the more talented offensive bigs ever. In an incredible performance earlier this year, Towns' absurd three-point shooting from behind screens finally won out, and Utah ultimately switched Gobert off of him. But Towns is a unicorn, and as detailed earlier this year, Gobert can still be a nightmare for slashing athletic bigs like Giannis, who can't stretch him with penetration and deep shooting. Rudy's maneuverability helps him come up to meet shooters in the pick and roll, and that length allows him to contest mid-range shots in these spots too. He can be beaten with quickness at times, just like most bigs, but the overall tools and activity make him a great screen and roll defender. He's particularly skilled at defending lobs, where he can slide toward the ball and then use his quick little leap to reach the pass. Look at how comfortably he backpedals into a jump to break this up. You also might have noticed how wide Gobert keeps his hands, and this helps defend these little interior passes. He'll also bust out an old Akeem Olajuwon move and throw a hand in the passing lane while contesting shots as an extra layer of defense. 
Gobert's post-defense is also elite, ranking in the top 10 in multi-year efficiency on post-ups per synergy tracking. Because of all this, impact metrics regularly view Gobert at the top of the defensive mountain, ranking first this year in a number of all-in-one defensive metrics. And more importantly, if we look at the overall value these metrics are calculating, Gobert's defense is enough to make him look like a top 15 player or so. This is consistent with other defensive superstars of the past who aren't as impactful as the best offensive players, but can match the impact of offensive stars just below that upper crust. For Rudy, most numbers view his offense as a neutral factor, so all of this is from his defense. He doesn't try to do too much, so his lack of shooting or traditional scoring moves doesn't really take much off the table, offset by an occasional extra pass and a strong roll game. He's great at angling for screens like this for his pick and roll partners and is an excellent lob finisher heading downhill or cleaning up as an offensive rebounder in these spots. With all that said, does his value hold in the playoffs? Playoffs? Well, in 2017, Gobert injured his knee in the opening moments of the postseason before returning for the Blitzkrieg by Golden State. But in 2018, he made key plays down the stretch in upsetting the higher seeded Thunder and his last two playoff series have been against the matchup hunting Rockets. In 2018, against a phenomenal Houston offense, Utah took a more vanilla approach to defending Harden and company. This left Gobert near the baseline as Harden came downhill toward him, not an ideal spot given Rudy's talents. But in 2019, Utah borrowed the Bucks' wild idea of overplaying Harden's step back, effectively funneling him into the lane. The Jazz botched this new scheme at first. Here's one of the first plays of the series, and the weak side help just completely forgets there's a new scheme. This happened a number of times in the first two games. Gobert is supposed to come meet Harden higher here, while the help defends the lob. Rudy, of course, still maintained his massive paint presence. This is great hustle and then body control to stop this shot. And by game three of the series, the Jazz started successfully executing this scheme, which took a toll. Rubio tries to stay on Harden's left hand here to disrupt his floater, and Gobert is up higher and James has little chance. And this is exactly what Utah wants, Harden trying to come downhill into Gobert, who's in front of the charge circle, playing to his strengths as a mobile paint protector. Just like Giannis struggled to score downhill into Gobert, Harden found it really difficult. And it's not like Houston could just switch hunt against Rudy because, remember, he's comfortable staying with guards in certain spots outside, and here he switches onto Chris Paul and crushes his attempt. The Rockets tried to go small and stretch Gobert to the corner, but the Jazz have the scheme tighter by now. Ingles comes over and Harden's being forced right into a straight jacket. When Gobert went to the bench, life became a lot easier for Harden and the Rockets. The same thing that happens in the regular season, where it's easy to see why Rudy's massive paint presence can be as valuable as an offensive star. As for the playoffs, Gobert helped Utah hold Harden to 38% shooting at the rim over the last three games of the series after starting 69% in the first two games. Not only was there a clear downward trend in Houston's offensive efficiency compared to prior performances against Utah, but Gobert himself had a huge presence in this scheme and made a number of fantastic late game defensive plays in a series where the Jazz dropped the two close games. Rudy, of course, isn't a flawless defender, and that means he won't have otherworldly impact against each type of opponent he encounters. But I'm not sure those weaknesses take away too much of his regular season value in general. And more importantly, given that I agree that he is roughly a neutral factor on offense, Rudy Gobert's massive defensive value makes him a solid all-NBA level player in my book. Remember to check out some of the additional videos on Gobert vs Giannis. To help me make more of these videos and support this channel, head on over to patreon.com slash thinkingbasketball. There's additional content, historical data, and a Discord community. A big thanks to all of you new Patreon supporters lately. And of course, I hope that you are all having a great day.